Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are continuing our budget pre-con upgrade series. We're looking at red now. So red is another one that was really hard to narrow down, but anyway. So when I say budget, I mean $2 or less and I'm using the TCG market value, not a sponsor, not at all. Pre-con upgrade. So red is the most aggressive color. Uh, mono red is often mocked. If you see a meme about mono red, it's probably calling mono red players dumb. Um, it's a common thing. Obviously, I don't think that is, has any basis, but okay, anyway. Um, red is great at doing damage, but light on things like life gain and protection, right? So again, it is pure aggression. It's not like, hey, let's gain some life. Hey, let's not take damage. It does those things occasionally, but it doesn't do them very well, you know, yeah. Red ramps and does card draw differently often opting for things like treasure tokens. So red ramp will often be uh, treasure tokens, things like that, or you have to sacrifice a creature and then you get mana, usually close to his casting cost kind of thing. Um, there are a few minor effects where like, uh, what is it, the elemental where uh, I had this recently on a budget deck. Um, you can activate the ability like three times, then you get a whole pile. Of, you get like seven red mana, but it costs you like six to activate it three times. So the exchange is not uh, really great. Anyway, uh, yeah. Also, when for card draw, usually it does rummaging instead, where you like discard and then draw, or draw and then discard. Maybe um, it has a lot of effects like that. A lot of goblins can t uh, just tap to be able to like discard and then draw, which can be very useful, especially if you've got like a lot of madness or things like that. Number five, Spike Shot Goblin, two and a red. I almost said green, I don't know why I have green on the brain. For a one, two. Okay, this sounds not good right off the bat. Um, three mana for a one, two, not good. But here, let's keep reading. For one red mana, tap him. Spike Shot Goblin deals damage equal to his power to any target. So a lot of creatures, especially goblins, will have similar um, abilities. But um, this one, the, the fact that you don't have to sacrifice it. Usually you have to sacrifice or the thing has to actually go to the graveyard somehow for th that to be activated. Here, this is just like tap them and do it over and over and over. So this is especially good with things like equipment decks where you can just put a whole bunch of equipment on them and then every turn just tap them or have some kind of untap effect. Maybe red is not good at untapping as well. So maybe if you've got like an is it, some kind of weird is it equipment deck, you can keep untapping it and then tap them and just keep doling out huge amounts of damage. Anyway, nine cents. Number four. Ferocity of the Wilds. For two and a red, it is an enchantment. Attacking non-human creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, eh, and trample. Okay, trample is the good part there, uh, obviously, but non-human is the only real restriction there. Yeah, humans are very useful, but it is not hard to build a deck that's at least primarily not human. Even if you have humans, okay, they don't have trample. If you really need that human in there, you can still do it. It's not like it's gonna, it just won't get the benefit of trample from this. That's it. Not that big a deal. Um, but very easy. Actually, I should have included this in a couple decks recently and I just didn't think of it. So this is a, I think maybe one that you forget as well. I don't know, but anyway, 14 cents. Number three. Collective Defiance. Okay, one red red for this sorcery and it has Escalate. Escalate's a kind of a weird one because there are similar mechanics that I think are a bit worse in some ways and maybe a bit better in other ways. But okay, so this is a modal spell, all right? You can, you have three options. Uh, target player discards all cards from hand and then draws that many cards. Again, if you're using this to like wheel someone or if you've got a bunch of madness, do this to yourself and uh, just cast a whole bunch of things without having to worry about it. Um, deal four damage to target creature. Probably removal, right? Four damage is a lot. Um, finally, deal three damage to target opponent or planeswalker. 
opponent or planeswalker so you can deal four damage to a creature and then three to an opponent or planeswalker on one card that's crazy how this works is i think again what gets a little confusing a lot of similar effects require that you pay for each mode um this does not the first one is built into the cost so by paying the three you get one of these modes if you want an extra one you pay one extra mana per mode so you can cast this for five and do everything on the card five mana for those three effects is uh, pretty good even if you only want the damage ones if you want two of them it's four mana to do a total of seven damage um that's not too shabby either really um it, this will get a lot done and it's the flexibility is something that you can't really get mad about um for three mana it's good anyway 14 cents number two seize the spotlight okay for two and a red a sorcery this is using the vote mechanic i really like the vote mechanic especially forcing people like do you want you know to <laughs> We choose between two bad options it's a uh, it's pretty good for each opponent oh uh, sorry each opponent chooses fame or fortune for each player who chose fame gain control of a creature that player controls remember they do not choose the creature you choose the creature so if they are going to go that route you're going to take their best creature for that turn then you take it untap it and it gains haste so even if they've just cast it uh, you can take it and untap it and it's uh, not summoning sick anymore. I guess it probably wouldn't be tapped if it was summoning sick, but if they've got like, you know, if they use it as a pilot or something maybe, or saddled with it, anyway. Uh, for each player who voted fortune, you draw a card and create a treasure token. All right, so in a commander game or a multiplayer game, you probably have three opponents. So this is costing you three and you're probably gonna get three treasures. If you have treasure synergy, this is really, really good. But why this is actually insanely good is because card draw. You can get treasure and draw a card. Card draw and ramp are two things every deck wants to do. Um, this, I think, fits into pretty much any deck, really. You can justify this in any deck, at least. Um, especially if you want treasures or if you want to, like, yeah, if you like forcing people into bad decisions, it's great. This is up to 139. I featured this card before on, I have no idea what video. I've done over 200 now, so I can't, can't keep track. But this is, yeah, this is just a great card. It is going up in value now. So it's one of those ones where I say, if you're going to get it, get it soon. Number one. Rose Room Treasurer. Okay, three and a red. Four, uh, four, three. Four mana for a four, three. Not great. It's okay. Accessible. Not great. Yeah. But he has Alliance. Whenever another creature you control enters, so any creature, it doesn't matter if it's a token creature, non-token, whatever, it counts. A lot of these things will specify that it, token creatures do not set it off. It'll only be non-token creatures. This doesn't care. Alliance always doesn't care, I guess. Create a treasure token if, if it's the first or second time. So the first two creatures you uh, have entered the battlefield, or even if you blink them, right? The first two, you're creating treasure. And then you may pay X when you do. Rose Room Treasure deals X damage to any target. So you can just convert mana straight into damage which is great for a finisher, right? If it's, you know, well past the midpoint of the game, people's life totals are probably starting to go down, and that's when you can just like, pick them off with something like this. Um, it's a really easy way to sneak in the win. Also, it's red, so you got a lot of those red combat boosting effects that um, this can benefit from. Anyway, 11 cents. The list, okay. Spike Shot Goblin, nine cents only. Nine, I. Ferocity of the Wilds, 14 cents. <laughs> Cheap. Collective Defiance, also 14 cents. Seize the Spotlight is 139. Rose Room Treasurer is a whole 11 cents. 
Once again, I see the thing sees the spotlight and Rose Room Treasure are cards that you can put in almost any deck and it's like, yeah, that works. That's gonna ramp, that's gonna card draw or deal damage or whatever you want it to do. Anyway, take it easy.